Hi, I'm Sandia from FBE Automation, and I'm here today with Lauren Vandemark of FlexLine Automation. And the topic today is case erectors, robotic case erectors. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Sandia. Uh, what is a case erector? Let's start there. Okay. Um, so <laughs> case erectors or carton erectors or box erectors, um, they are pretty much what it sounds like. It's taking a box and folding and in our case, taping the box, but um, sometimes you can glue them or even staple boxes closed. But specifically our case erector, the box EZ, tapes uh just a regular rsc which is just your standard center fold type of box um, together with either two inch or three inch tape and tell me about flex lines box easy in particular okay well a number of years ago uh one of our local customers came to us and they had a bit of a problem they were struggling to be able to keep and get employees even um, at the start of the pandemic. And they were looking to automate their case erecting. And they didn't have the floor space for a traditional case erector because I don't know if you know this or not, but traditional case erectors are really, really big. And they generally are dedicated to doing only one size of box unless you do a lot of changeover. And that changeover can be kind of a pain. You have to go in and, and move a bunch of dies around and things like that. So they came to us and they asked us if we could come up with a solution. And our solution for them was to use a collaborative robot to erect four different sizes of boxes and be able to put those into a gravity conveyor queue for a packout station so that they could move the employees that they had been having over there trying to erect boxes and the pack boxes to other more value added tasks. That is so interesting and I've seen it work. It's really amazing. Um, so the benefits are relatively clear. I mean, you reach for a box and there it is. It's assembled, put together, taped and ready to pack. Um, so basically precision and reliability with zero labor cost. Uh, but what are the operating costs? Well, um, since we use a collaborative robot, that's actually just like 120 in and an airline drop. Um, all of our end of arm tooling for this is vacuum generated. So we do need to have compressed air, but most plants honestly have that or have the capacity for doing that anyway. So it's not um, a whole big expense and it can just plug into a standard wall outlet, which makes it really nice, uh, especially if you have you know, more than one location that you want to put this in or something, we can design it so that it's on casters and you can roll it around to different parts of your plant. If you're making boxes on one side of something one day and another, another day, it's a really flexible solution. And I didn't really touch on it, but one nice thing with this is since it's a collaborative robot, it doesn't require the guarding that you would if you were doing a traditional industrial robot with this type of application. I'm not saying that we couldn't put an industrial on it if your application needed it, but um, with the collaborative, it's really nice and they are so easy to work with. It's not just collaborative as in like, it's not going to whack into you really hard and send you to the ER. It's collaborative as in my nice little marketing major self can actually program one of these, which is not something that I can do with one of the big industrial robots. Um, and so it's a really versatile and easy to install, easy to reconfigure and easy to redeploy. If, you know, at some point you want to stop erecting boxes and case pack or palletize, we can actually design the end of arm tooling where it can do double duty. So if your cycle time allows you to, you can make a box, send it down a conveyor, that same box can come back completely loaded and that same robot can then turn to the left and palletize, which is a really nice solution. And it allows for a lot of bang for your buck whenever it comes to ROI. We really like to maximize the amount of use that our customers are able to get out of these solutions. That is very nice. Wow. And so uh, let's say a company decides that they are going to uh, move forward with the box easy. Uh, what happens next? 
Well, um, they get a hold of us and they tell us what sizes of boxes that they have that they're looking to erect. Generally with a uh, 10E, which is the standard robot that we've wound up using on these um, from Universal, we can do up to about a 24 inch long box and we can generally get four to six magazines in that space. So a customer could have four dedicated box magazines for four different sizes of boxes that they had without us having to add in like a seventh axis slide or something to have access to more box magazines. So the starting point is we need to know box sizes. The other limiting factor with this is we are going to need to know the cycle time, the number of boxes that they're going to need per minute because obviously as that robot has to reach out and pick different box sizes, that's going to slow it down if it has to pick over here and then erect over here, as opposed to if it just has like a dedicated magazine for one box size, or you're doing a batch process where you're making a whole bunch of one size of box and then switching the magazine over and changing the program on the robot to erect a different size box which is another thing that we can look at doing. So uh, basically you've accounted for every different instance and you just ask the right questions. And it sounds like uh, you uh, give a lot of assistance in terms of getting the uh, company set up with the box easy. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we don't want to come into a plant and have the facility or the employees unhappy with this. I mean, automation is here to make all of our lives easier, not to take someone's job. It's, you know, here to allow that guy to not have to stand there and make boxes all day. Cause who wants to make boxes all day? I mean, I, I go out and pack things every so often and I have a heck of a time with that tape gun. Like I need like three more arms to be able to get some of those boxes together. Right. And so this is going to make everyone's life better. And part of that is, you know, the on-site training and the ease of programming. And we include training along with all of our installations so that once it gets to a plant, um, we get all of the guys there, the maintenance guys, the plant engineers, everybody on board with knowing what they're going to get and how to touch it up if something happens and, you know, they switch box sizes on us or something and they need to tweak the program. We make sure that all of the customers know how to do that. And then even if something happens and say the customer is like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm I'm completely panicking. I've got no idea. We actually, you know, give everyone our cell phone number and everything so that we can be called 24 seven and we will be there just a phone call, um, a video chat or even a plane right away. So we, we really try to have the same level of after sales support with the robotic applications that we've always provided to our customers with our conveyor solutions. Sounds like it. Lauren, I want to thank you very much for being here with me today and explaining all of that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Bye-bye.